Um, well, we got a few announcements, and we have, man, we have a spirit-packed filled day today, and uh, God is going to do some things today. I think, you know what? I think God's going to knock our socks off today. Okay, Amen. Are you ready for it? Are you excited? We, we're going to hear lots of good stuff today. Um, Miss Justine has a, an announcement, and then I got several things. Good morning. So since the ladies' retreat this year on our district was not going to be happening, um, our ladies' committee came together and we decided to do one as a church. Um, the reason I'm announcing it this morning instead of just putting it in our bulletins is because the hotel we decided to book um, needs our answer for how many rooms we need by the 16th of October. So um, if you ladies are interested in going to that, we will also have a sign-up sheet, probably. Does that sound right? Should we do a sign-up sheet? I don't know. I guess that was off the whim. Um, <laughs> um, but we will be getting together for fellowship and crafts and all sorts of fun together as ladies um, on November 13th and 14th. It's going to be an overnight thing, um, and we'll be just going and staying at a hotel in Fort Wayne. But if you'd like to go do that, please let me or Connie or Marilyn or Rachel know as soon as possible. That way we know about how many rooms we need for that event. Thank you. Take it with you. <laughs> Jerry will show you. <laughs> Jerry will hook you up. Don't talk on your way back there. Everybody will hear you. <laughs> Go ahead, actually. Um, hey, just a few announcements this morning. Hey, I'm not going to mention everything in the bulletins today because if you see, we're about to have to make this a, a booklet, okay, because God is moving in such great ways. Uh, just a reminder uh, and an announcement, who's ready to eat some fish? Yeah. Who's ready to eat some chicken? More fish than chicken, right? Yeah. So Dan's Fish Fry, Tuesday, 4.30, come. If you are a helper, please be here by 4, 4.15, 3.30. <laughs> I'm not the boss, apparently. So 3.30. And, um, uh, and so we can kind of get you, you know, plugged into place where, where you're going to be. So um, we're always excited for Dan's Fish Fry. And could you do me a favor? Could, could you make it at a point, starting today sometime with your day, could you pray today, tomorrow, and Tuesday at some point in your day that God just does something amazing and that maybe we just sell out? You know, let's, let's sell out because, 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 you know, that prophet comes to the church so we can really do outreach and evangelism within our community and our town and even within our church. And so be in prayer for that, for what God would, would do through that. Um, and then another thing is uh, Norwell Band Booster. It's something that's a uh, discount card that's, that's open up again. If you're interested in getting one of those, I'm sure you know what it is, but you can see Rachel, Amber, or Lori. They can hook you up with that. Um, cleanup day the 17th. Please be, um, please be in thoughts, men, if you want to help with that. We, we have several uh, heavy things out in the garage, uh, like three big pews we got to get taken care of and, and get rid of. We could use some help with that. Uh, Halloween harvest and annual chili cook-offs coming up. And then um, just a reminder about the wear red, white, and blue on November 1st. It has nothing to do with the election. I just want to say that again. Um, and then one other thing. Uh, Next week is our missions bonfire, uh, at our mission service bonfire at the Bingham's house. I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be nice. The weather is like getting about just perfect for, you know, a hoodie and a bonfire. It's going to be great. Um, I think s'mores, you said, are secured? Yes. Secured. Someone has secured s'mores, so there will be s'mores. Guaranteed. All right. 100% guarantee or get your money back. For admission, it's free anyway. So, uh, so come to that. There's other stuff out there though that um, that you can sign up for. Um, hot dog buns, and just see Brittany; she'll hook you up. So, <laughs> hot dog buns is needed as of right now. That what she knows of. So, be looking forward to that. Um, and then one other thing: this is so awesome. We're so excited. Uh, to really roll out another another ministry here at the church. This is something that's been near and dear to your pastor's heart for a long time. It's been near to dear to Terry's heart uh, for a long time. It's something we've talked about for years now. Um, we've been in ministry together, and um, it's kind of like, our, it's where our heart kind of led us to the rescue mission, to do what we did at the rescue mission. It's led us to do so many different things, and, and, and Terry is so involved with, with many aspects of what we're going to talk about, and he's going to share a testimony today at some point, um, and so we really look forward to that. But I want you to know, you got a, a, an extra little insert in your bulletin today. This is what Restoration Grace Ministry is. It's a ministry that's going to meet on the first... Uh, I have it right here, right? The first, third, and fifth Tuesday. So every other Tuesday, if there's a fifth Tuesday, it'll be then from 7 to 8, or 7, man, uh, 7 to 8, 15 p.m. Uh, and it's, what it is, is um, 
Restoration Grace Ministries is a group where adults with hurts, hang-ups, and addictions meet together for encouragement and accountability and learn to accept our shortcomings as real and do the work to let God restore us to his good purpose. And so um, you'll find a little bit more about what that's all about in the bulletin and when Terry gives the testimony. And I've seen God work some great, great miracles through ministries like this. And so um, that's open to anybody and everyone in our church with full anonymity, anonymity, what, how's that word go? What, what, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Oh, you know the word, right? And so, um, uh, you know, I think God's really going to bless us through that and, and, and you individually. So it's going to be uh, a really good thing for our church. Be in prayer for that as God leads us in, into that, you know. Um, one last thing, I want to invite uh, Ryan and Erica Samsel to come up. Uh, some of you know maybe what I'm getting ready to announce. Um, Ryan's leaving us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Ryan has uh, uh, received a call to ministry. And so this is a pretty exciting thing. And so Ryan's been wrestling. I'm not going to tell this whole story. I'll, let, I'll give him just a couple minutes to tell his story. But Ryan's been wrestling with a call to ministry for a long time. Since I've known him, we've talked about it. And uh, just recently, uh, God has kind of clearly spoken to him. And Ryan has, um, has answered that call. And he's went before the board of this church and has been approved his local minister's license. And so Ryan is, a, is an official minister in the Church of the Nazarene now, and he has begun Bible college, and he's working through that. And so his next step would be uh, to seek his district license and then go on into to ordination. And, and it takes time, and it takes effort, and it takes prayer, and not just on their part, but on our part, to help encourage this family uh, as they make sacrifices in their own life uh, to do ministry here in our church. And we already see a lot of that happening just with the worship team and other things that, that they do. And so we're real excited. And so um, right now, Ryan is a, is a minister, and soon we'll be able to call him pastor. And so uh, Ryan has taken over um, the youth ministry on Wednesday night, and he's been killing it. It's been awesome. We, we had like 12 kids last week, something like that. And so it's been good. He's doing a good job. So um, we're proud of him here. So I just want to give you your certificate. And uh, that's something that we get to renew every year as, as we as a church hold him accountable to what he does. And, and he works alongside me under, under, under my leadership and, and under the leadership of the board. And we just want to be there to encourage him and to help uh, equip him and to train him and to help build him up into what God's called him to be. Ryan, you want to share just briefly uh, your call and your testimony there? Yeah. Um, oh, wait, hold on. I need that mic back. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Sing a song, Ryan, while we wait. <laughs> and dance. <laughs> and dance. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that's not going to happen again. Uh, people will leave. If... Is this on? Okay. So, uh, yeah. my name's Ryan. This is my wife, Erica. Um, I was raised in the church, uh, my dad was a pastor. When I reached high school, I kind of uh, rebelled a lot, um, took a turn for the worse, uh, really ran away from God, uh, so I, I kind of know the, the struggles and stuff, um, how I pretty much ruined my young adult years. Um, I want to be able to reach out to, to the young adults and, and uh, young teens of how to overcome, how to not go down that path, how to really... Um, fight it, you know, um, the temptations and stuff that they'll have uh, during high school and throughout their uh, young adult life. Uh, so I just, I have a passion to, to really help kids grow um, and be more Christ-like. Uh, like as Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Uh, that's what I want to be and set an example for, for the young kids of um, just how to battle with life and everyday things that they're going to be uh, dealing with. Okay, awesome. Uh, he forgot to mention at summer camp this summer, oh, yeah. God just wrecked him, and he came home and he said, I, I, I can't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say these words verbatim, but he said, I, I just can't not do it anymore. And so he knew he had to answer his call uh, on his life more than he needed his next breath. And so we want to help encourage him and, and see that through and help him become uh, just an amazing leader in the, in the kingdom of God. Hey, let's pray for him. If you could for me, uh, just because of everything that's kind of going on right now, just, just bow your heads and just reach out your hand or whatever, or just, just pray with us as you're there. 
Father, we thank you so much for this couple, Lord. We thank you so much for uh, the call that you've put on their life. And Lord, we just pray that as they begin to walk in obedience and step with the Spirit, Lord, that you begin to open doors for them, God. Lord, we pray that as they're going to walk through some newness of life here soon, not only that, Lord, but as some busyness of life to add to full-time job and, and family, Lord, he's also going to be now preparing lessons every week for teens and doing teen retreats and all different kinds of things. And then even on top of that, God, he still has to go to Bible college and, and to study, Lord. And I just pray that that time, Lord, is not a burden to him, that that time, it, that you just make the time that he could set aside, Lord, that he can really dive into his studies, Lord, and dive into his ministry ministry so he can know more of you and know more of your will for his life, God. I pray for Erica, Lord, as she is a, a strong, strong helpmate, God. And I pray that as we've seen her lift the mic to his mouth, Lord, we pray, pray we just continue to see her lift him to you, God, and to be there in times of struggle, in times of frustration, in times when the enemy just tries to, to, just tries to beat down on your pastors and those who bring the word, God. And I just pray that not only her, Lord, but us as his body, as his family, Lord, that uh, as the body of Christ, Lord, that we continue to lift him up and to encourage him and, and to help him see his calling through. God, we know he needs the help, Lord. We know it's not easy. We know the enemy will, will attack and try to pull him away from, from it every single time. But God, may we be faithful. May we be faithful to our calling to encourage one another and to lift one another up. Father, we just are so grateful. Um, so grateful to see new life, Lord, and, and to see new ministries popping up, Lord, and to see you... Uh, equipping your people, connecting them to serve. Lord, we thank you so much, and we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Awesome. You may take this with you now. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Can we have the worship team come up? And could we stand? And um, why don't you look at someone this morning and just tell them how amazing it is to see them today. <laughs> Let's worship the Lord together this morning. Amen. Yours is the power, 
yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but from evil. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sometimes some of us have problems with consequences of our choices. Um, and those consequences can turn into behaviors that we can lose control of. It becomes an addiction or a compulsive behavior that controls us instead of the other way around. For me, that was alcohol. Uh, for others, it may be drugs, pornography, gambling, enabling. The list is as long as any negative response to a reality situation. It can get out of control. The only um, I came to the bottom. The only way out was up, and I had lost control for the last time. Mm -hmm. I cried out to God to help me, and he did. It took getting in trouble with the law uh, to realize that I needed professional help. Uh, I put myself in a rehab situation um, at Fort Wayne Recovery for four months, and I did the work. And 
uh, I have victory. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I also realize that this is a calling for me as well. I mean, your, your victory is only as good as what you can give back, mm -hmm. in my Amen. opinion. Uh, so that's why we're starting this, uh, the Restoration Grace Ministry and the 12-step program. And this is for anybody, anybody you love or yourself or anybody, but it is, what it boils down to is our choice. Mm -hmm. And that the step one, uh, it, it's based on the 12 steps that Alcoholics Anonymous use. And the, uh, the 12 steps have always been based on comparisons to biblical verses. And uh, even though, you know, it has gone through some transitions and they allow some different things in, as far as, you know, my higher power. Our higher power is Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, even in, I'm just going to read step one, because this is where it begins. We admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives had become unmanageable. And the biblical verse for that is, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. It is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. That's Romans 7, 18. That's the first step. So if there's something that you're dealing with, it can't be just a part of your life and say, well, it's over here and I don't have, I don't have control over that over here. It controls all of your life. So that's when you have to um, actually admit it and say, hey, I need help. And that's what we're here for. That's what this is, is help. Um, there's more to it feel free to ask me more about my story or anything else uh, about it because I'm an open book about this. So uh, uh, I just invite you to do that for yourself or for whoever you know that may need that. And uh, I'm looking forward to God's blessing in this because uh, I know he's there. And uh, I'm just about as excited as I get. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I just wanted to share that with you and invite you to come. And thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. God is good. Uh, in Psalms 42, uh, verses 1 through 6, it says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, mm -hmm. while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with shouts, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God.
I love that song. I, I posted it a couple weeks ago when the Lord was sharing it with me, and then Terry, I think, picked up on it <laughs> a week ago. So thank you for that. Hey, um, uh, can I have the ushers come forward? I don't know if we asked anyone today. I don't know. So, all, all right. There's four. Awesome. Okay. Um, one, one more thing. Can I say something else about Restoration Grace? And I know you touched on it a little bit, but I want us to be clear that that's for anything. That's not just for the big three, you know, alcohol, drugs, and pornography. That's not the only three it's for. It's for depression. It's for sadness. It's for, um, you know, relational issues. It's for whatever is troubling your heart, right? Amen. Whatever it is. It's for, it's for an addiction to, to, to eating. It's whatever it is. Any negative response. Any negative response, yeah. And so, um, and, and we're going to come together, and, and we're going to share a time together, and then we'll split into... Uh, men and women in their own groups, and we'll have a moment to, to just share how the week's going. There's no uh, stand up and admit everything you've ever done. And the word is confidential, by the way. Yeah. Not what I, it, confidential. It's there we go. And, yeah, confidential. Everything's confidential. And we've set it up to where there's no other ministries going on in the church other than that one at that given time because we want it to be completely confidential. And so. Um, I'm just excited what God's doing through this. It's been a long time dream and, and passion and call. It's finally coming. It's finally coming true. So um, I'm excited. Um, I'm going to pray for our offering. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for the spirit that's in this place. We thank you for the overflow, God. Lord, as we move from, from this part of worship into this part of worship, Lord, uh, we ask that um, you bless this gift. And we pray that you bless this giver, Lord. We pray that you um, bless us to be able to, to use it and to multiply it and, to, and, and to, reach, um, to reach people for the kingdom, God. To do whatever it is that you have laid on the hearts of Ossian Church of the Nazarene to do ministry with, God. We are so thankful uh, that we are able to be here today. And, and it wouldn't be possible without faithful givers, Lord. And so we're just so thankful for the blessing that you give between us. And Lord, we, we just... We continue to, to, to pray that, Malachi 3.10, Lord, to just to test you into this, Lord, and to just, to just give obediently, God, to give out of a cheerful heart, as the New Testament says, God, whatever it is, Lord, to just, for us to just give, Lord, and to, to trust in that you will bless it, Lord, that you will take care and that you will multiply it and, and that you will also bless the giver in ways we may not even understand. And we just thank you so much for those promises that we have in Scripture. And, Lord, we ask of this today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, here in just a moment, we're going to have, go ahead, we're going to have another uh, wonderful testimony from our very own uh, Eva Smith. And so she's going to come and she's going to share testimony. And she's also going to share, uh, part of her testimony is a song that the Lord has put on her heart that she's going to share with us. And so um, we want to welcome Eva to come up. Good morning. Uh, I get up here and I get scared. Um, there was a song I had asked if we could do here at church, but I kind of wanted to give my testimony to. I don't know, but I'm sure that all of us are sinners. I'm probably one of the biggest sinners of all, at least I feel that way. And to know that God has loved me and saved me has just meant so much. I grew up in a Christian home, but my parents were very strict. I was the youngest of, well, my dad was married once and had three children, and my mom married him, and they had six more, and I was the baby of the family. I felt ignored, neglected. I mean, my mom was not affectionate. My dad wasn't so much either. And so I just felt like I existed in a house where nobody cared about me. And when I became a teenager, I became extremely rebellious. 
I quit going to church. I didn't want anything to do with it. I just really went down the deep end. I moved away from home when I got a job, sh shared it with a coworker, and we lived a wild life. Um, I didn't know until many years later that I had become addicted to sex. I had uh, two children out of wedlock. I love those children dearly, and I don't ever regret having them, but I do regret the circumstances under which I did it. It's good, kids, to keep yourselves chaste and save yourselves for marriage. And I just, I don't know, I just don't quite know how to say. You know, my son tried to set fire to our house. There was a lot of discord in our home, and that brought me to my knees. I was 32 by that time, and I had accepted Christ when I was young, but this time it was in earnest, but it still took me years to get beyond my past. But God has brought me in such a long way, and I am so grateful for his love and what he has done for me. And I look out at you, and I know that nobody here is perfect. If you are, would you please stand? <laughs> I'd like to meet you. <laughs> but I just, this song means so much to me because it just talks about what God has done for us. And <clears throat> you all are seated now, but what I would like is if this song speaks to your heart, please stand and give your testimony as far as by standing how much God means to you. say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to you. To God be the glory, to God be the glory.
Anybody else have goosebumps right now? So, the Holy Spirit bumps. <laughs> uh, you may be seated. Thank you so much, Eva. Man, isn't it amazing? Um, I'm going to give one shot here because uh, I feel the Spirit telling me to do it. Does anyone have a testimony they'd like to share this morning? Erica. Amen. Uh, can you visit the last song? Just praise him as if it's the last one, and you want other people to know how good he is. Oh. And that's, that's all. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I think you got one, too. Yeah. Um, well, hold on a second. Children, you, you are dismissed. <laughs> yeah, I know we're running a little late this morning, but yeah, go ahead. Well, when I was born, the doctors told my granddad to pull my heart, and the doctors did a tear on my parents had told me that there was a network of things from that he ended up dying. And, the, and I, he said, the Lord, and Satan brought me to the DT. The doctor goes and tear the floor of my heart. Mm-hmm. And I still do got problems. And there's times when I'm but he repaired it. And someday when I go to medical center, there's going to be a scar tissue. And I just pray the Lord to make me see that too. Amen. Amen. It's the grace of God. Um, I'll just share one real quick, and then I have a short little 30 or 60 second video for you. Uh, all week, I'm going to tell you, church, I'm going to be honest. I know you hear a lot of this sometimes that God gave me a new message to write, you know, on Sunday morning, and you've heard that a lot. But, man, this morning, I was singing that this morning. I was singing. You can ask my wife. I had, I was in there brushing my teeth, doing my hair. I had my tribute on, and I was singing to God be the glory all morning. And I wrestled all week to write this message. I was, I mean, I wrestled with God. I did not want to preach what I'm preaching today. And um, I tried to, I prayed for God, give me a new word. God, give me a new word. God, give me a new word. And it never came. And Terry's literally smirking because he knows because he was wrestling with me or he was watching me wrestling Thursday with it. And, and uh, I was just sleepless over it. And this morning, God made it clear to me uh, when I woke up that this is the message for today. And um, so my testimony is, is just what she's saying, is, is today I'm going to preach this message whether I like it or not, like it's my last message I ever get to preach, okay? And uh, we only get to experience true worship like this through the grace of God, amen? And that's what we're talking about. We only get to hear testimonies by the grace of God who work in people's lives, the grace of God to work in your life. The grace of God has worked in all of our lives. Uh, the trammels, our hearts go out to you this week. They just had a house fire. But by the grace of God, it's not a total loss. By the grace of God, you guys are safe and okay. By the grace of God, he's providing through the insurance to get things taken care of. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps, church. But by the grace of God, I just want to shout and scream and yell his praises. Amen? Okay, let's watch this quick video to intro my sermon. say today, but I got more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Um, why don't you turn, it's going to be a while before I'm there. Turn with me to, in your Bibles and thumb it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 1 through 18. Um, I tell you what, church, uh, this, like I said this morning, I, I've just been thinking about grace, and, and the title to today's message is, is Paralyzed by Grace. 
And, and it's not an idea that we have so much grace that we're paralyzed by it. That's not it. But the idea is that sometimes I'm paralyzed by the thought that grace is just forgiveness and that grace doesn't work in so many different ways. You know, the testimonies we heard this morning, the grace of God brought salvation, but then the grace of God continued to work in them to do, as Terry said, his key word, to do the work, right? To put in the work to overcome. And it's by the grace of God he had the strength to do that, amen? And, and so, uh, yes, we talk about, be, you got to be real careful, and you may be getting you know, antsy in your seat. I'm not talking about um, working to earn that grace. It's freely offered. I'm talking about that uh, when we receive the gift of, of grace and salvation, that's just the beginning, church. That's not the finish line, right? It's not, oh, whew, I'm good. I'm saved. <laughs> Nothing else matters now, right? I can do what I want to do. That's not it. I mean, the grace of God empowers us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ empowers us. We have the, we have the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection living, whew, <laughs> living inside us, all right? Amen? It's the Holy Spirit to overcome. And I, I'm always just, I'm always just, just so floored when I get into John chapter 11 and I hear, I hear Jesus talking to the sisters and he's like, listen, he said, even though your brother die, he will live. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And by the grace of God, he sent his son to make that possible. So here we are, our second week in our series on grace. Last week we discovered that grace is more than forgiveness, that grace, like I'm talking about this morning, can teach us a new way to live. And, and you know why that's so important? Because I think so many followers, even like Christians who've been Christians their whole life, Christians for 20, 30, 40 years, I, I believe that we can really come down and have this limited view of God's grace, right? With this, this, that, that God's grace has been limited to something that we can just use occasionally or is only available to us occasionally, and I want you to know the power of the grace of God is so powerful, powerful, power, wow, I'm struggling with words today, powerful, not powerful, bull. That's, that's different, right? Uh, I was going to say capable, and I, and I used powerful instead, and it kind of came together, but the grace of God is capable of reaching across. Think of everything that's going on in our, in our social world right now, right? It's capable of reaching across, across every culture, every gender, every generation, every political party, right? Every, it's been, you know, we've reduced, I think, this, this limited view of God's grace. We've reduced it down to just mean forgiveness. But it reaches across all these areas of our life. And I think a lot of us have said this before in our, in our past, or maybe even currently, but we've said, you know, God loves me just the way I am, right? Have we said that before? You know, I think we're comfortable with that statement, but we're a lot less comfortable with this statement when we say, could, could we say that God loves me so much he won't let me stay just the way I am? That's a lot different than the way I am versus stay the way I am, because we should be continually growing, right? It's not here's I'm gonna vomit grace onto you right I'm gonna give it to you all at once and that's the only time you can use it that's a limited view of grace grace teaches us a new way to live right grace teaches us how to overcome battles in our life and and mental physical chemical whatever it is it teaches us how to overcome the grace of God was given to us to give and I found real quick this morning that the grace of God was given to me to not only give to others but you know what I needed to give it to myself. Sometimes, church, some of you in here need to give yourself a little bit of grace. Right? Some of you are a little too hard on yourself. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Last week we, we were in Titus chapter 2, if you weren't with us, and we learned that, yes, grace saves, but grace teaches. And I think most of us are, 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 are okay with receiving forgiveness but boy, it's real easy to skip school, skip church, right, when it comes time to learning how to live and how to deny ungodly ways and ungodly worldly passions and to live sensible, upright, godly lives like the scripture tells us to. I think we skip school a lot of times when it comes to that. And I think week after week, and this may sound a little backwards, so just, just listen to me. You're going to have to really think today. I know it's, it's kind of a deep, deep message, but I think week after week, a lot of Christians in our world are, are constantly told about the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross, right? Amen. Amen to that, right? And they're told that there's nothing they can do to earn God's approval or salvation. Amen. Absolutely right. 100% true. Do you agree with that? Raise your hand, right? 100% true. There's nothing we could do. 
But then we're also encouraged to go and live holy lives. And to walk in a manner that pleases God. And a lot of times we miss the chasm there of telling them how to do that. <laughs> you know? Richard Foster was a man who spent most of his adult life, you can look him up, uh, most of his adult life encouraging Christians to grow in the grace of of God, to continue in the graces of God. And, and we do things by, uh, we call that in the church of Nazarene, we call it means of grace, right? Right? Prayer, going to church, baptism, communion, all these different things, means of grace. And he points out that the message of grace is something, something more than merely meaning or gaining just forgiveness. Foster says that there's this disconnect, and this is important, listen to me, church, that there's this disconnect between the good news of Jesus and becoming the light of the world, right? There's this, there's this huge disconnect of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we always narrow it down to just Jesus came to forgive, and Jesus came to die and to save, but Jesus came and he taught, amen? He told us to be, he said, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, let your light shine. <laughs> Matthew 5, 16. And I think Christians today, they're, they're, hearing, uh, they're hearing the same message. A, a, a lot of times, week after week, along with the same remedy, week after week. And I think because of that, we stay in the same place. When pastors wrestle with God, and then they feel like they won, and they preach something different, we lose out. That's what I'm learning today. Richard Foster wrote, he said, when we do those kinds of things, when we have this limited view of God's grace, instead of being saved by it, we're paralyzed by it. We're paralyzed by it. We're stuck in that moment of new birth, and we never crave anything further. And so what I'm saying is, church, is listen, if we continue to think that God's forgiveness that God's grace is just for forgiveness, we'll never discover that there's grace for everyday life. We'll, we'll never discover that there's grace in time of a house fire, right? There's, we'll never discuss that there's grace in times of addiction. We'll never discuss that there's grace in times of, uh, of, of marital issues, of, of, of friendship issues, or whatever it is. We'll never discover that God's grace can help us through those times because we think it's just for forgiveness, in the New Testament alone, and I'm not going to mention every one, but if you look at the, the connections uh, between grace and other things, there's connections between grace and truth, grace and power, grace and spiritual gifts, grace and thanksgiving, generosity, provisions, sufferings, and your destiny, your, your, your eternal, heavenly, godly destiny in Christ. I can go on and on. There's all these connections that we see that grace is so much more than just forgiveness. Could you agree with that? Amen. I guess I'm done. No. If our view of grace is limited to just receiving forgiveness, Jesus cannot be our model for, for how to receive grace. If it's just forgiveness, Jesus cannot be our model of how to live in grace, of how to give in grace, and how to depend every second of my life on grace. Jesus can't be that model if that's all we believe, if it's just for forgiveness. I mean, Jesus is the one who taught us. Jesus taught Peter, John, Paul, and countless other new believers how to live a kind of grace, spirit-filled life. We see that all through our Acts. If you want to know about the early church, read the book of Acts. It talks about that's the start of the church. We see Pentecost jump off right in chapter 2. Peter preaches 3,000 are saved. It's amazing. And they begin to live a grace-filled life. And so here's my question for us today, church. I don't think I gave you a slide. How does God's grace apply to my everyday life, right? In a manner that I am conscious of the supply of it and know how to use it. Let me say it again. How does God's grace apply to my everyday life in a manner that I am conscious, I am aware that it's there, that it's available, that it's within my reach, that it's been freely given, and then how do I use it? Just receive it. It's that simple. Just receive it. It's freely given. Amen? If you've been in church sometime, 
you know that the grace of God means Christians have gotten a pretty good deal, amen? Right? Because we, whoo, until Jesus came, it wasn't looking good for people, right? Most often, it described, Nancy Bell gave us this one last week, which is true, and I think Rachel told me, which is true, but I was like, I can't get ahead of myself. But most often, the grace of God is described as, as not getting what we deserve, right? That's how we know grace, or God's unmerited, uh, unmerited favor, right, right? Or, or on us. And then there's another one, there's an anachronym. Have you ever heard of the anachronym for grace? It means God's riches at Christ's expense. Isn't that kind of neat? And, and, but here's the thing, I'm going to say something bold. All those, those, all those, although those are true, I think they only tell part of a truth. And these partial truths, it can harm our spiritual formation. It can harm our growth. Because you know why we say things, we buy into it. We let the devil tell us. Eva said a very bold statement this morning. She quoted Romans 3.23, right? We've all are sinners, right? We've all sinned and fall short upon the glory of God. That's true. So true. But we say things like this all the time, and we say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But where does the badge of honor? That's true. It's very true. Or we say, there's nothing good inside of me. I'll always be a sinner because that's what I am. You know, some people have sung that tune their whole life. And yes, it's very true. Yes, it's very true. But if we stop there, what happens is we agree with our sin, right? We agree with the sin diagnosis. And then we begin to think that it's a permanent condition, right? We begin to agree with the prognosis. Does that make sense? You know, we, we don't want to go around all the time just beating ourselves over the head. Yes, it's awesome to acknowledge that I'm a sinner, but it's also good to acknowledge that Jesus Christ has forgiven, and we've seen that in the testimony this morning, that we have overcome, we are victorious because he was victorious. Amen? Because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it should tell you that things like that are a lie. If something is constantly dragging you down and reminding you of your guilt, reminding you of your sin, that's not Jesus. Jesus doesn't lord it over you. He has forgiven you multiple places in Scripture. I wouldn't have had time today to share all of them with you. It talks about blotting out our sins. I'm going to share one with you later. But he remembers our sins no more, right? When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, church, it means you have the power to overcome. I talked about that last week. It means that you have time, or you have help in your time of need. Has anyone ever heard of miserable sinner theology? It's kind of not a theology I'd like to be a part of, right? Just by the name, right? Here, here, simply put, here's what it means. If we're told often enough that we're miserable sinners, unable uh, to overcome sin or overcome shortcomings, hurts or hang-ups, if we're told often enough that we're just these miserable sinners, these horrible people, that we can never overcome our, sh- our, our shortcomings, as sooner or later you're be- going to begin to see yourself in that light. Parents, if we're constantly berating our kids and talking down to them and, and, and telling them they're stupid or they're dumb or why'd you do that, you idiot, or this or this or this or this, sooner or later they're going to see themselves in that light. If we're constantly cutting down our friends over and over again or our spouses over and over again, they're going to begin to see themselves in that light. And that's kind of how it was before Jesus. Jesus. They were constantly told they were miserable sinners. You have your Bibles ready? Hebrews 10, it'll be on the board. But here's the beautiful thing, church. The grace of God changed all that. Amen? The grace of God changed all that. This is a long passage. I'm going to try to read it slowly. But I want you to really listen. And I'm going to kind of give you a little synopsis here of it. And we're going to turn to the, like the back of the, the book we read and we read about it first. I'm going to give you a little bit of that this morning. In this passage, you're going to read how things used to be. You're going to see two different kinds of orders here. You're going to see things how things used to be. You're going to see Jesus come on the scene. You're going to see Jesus do something, and you're going to see the grace of God at work. Okay, does that make sense? You're going to see a shift. Okay, let's, let's listen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For since the law was but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased uh, to be offered, since the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins. 
Verse 3, but in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, behold, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, hear me church, and by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. By a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us after, for after saying, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their minds and write them on their minds, or on their hearts, and then write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Oh, it's heavy. I know it's a heavy passage. I hope you got it. I want to help you understand a little bit more, but in this passage, like I said, there's, there, there's two orders here. There's, there's two ways we've seen throughout Scripture uh, by which sins were forgiven or attempted to be forgiven. In the first order, there were things that keep people out of church today, it seems like. We hear this excuse. There was rules and instructions and policies and things you had to do, right, in order to be forgiven. And then you found out, guess what? It didn't work after all. It, it didn't truly set you free from the grip of sin. And not only that, after you followed all these rules and all these policies and you did all these things, you were constantly reminded of what you had done. It was kind of like your sin was constantly rubbed in your face. Let me ask you this morning. Has it, have you ever had someone in your life that just constantly reminds you of a mistake that you've made? How did it feel? Over and over again, they just keep letting you know you messed up. Does it make you feel like a failure? Does it make you feel like you've been forgiven? Probably not, because that's not forgiveness. Because that's not the grace of God. You know what it is? It's torture. It's torture. It's not what Jesus does. It's torture. In verse 3, it said that the people of the Old Testament, it said that they had an annual reminder of their sins. Why would they need an annual reminder of their sins? Because they weren't forgiven. It says in verse 4, it tells us, it says, It is impossible for the blood of the bulls and the goats to take away sins. Church, it is impossible for us to, to do things to be forgiven of sins. It's impossible for us to come and to mow the church yard, and it's impossible to come and take out the trash, and it's impossible to carry the groceries for the lady at the grocery store and to think that that makes up for something we've done. It's impossible. I want to tell you this morning, there's no such thing as karma. It's a lie that the devil put into this world. It's a bold-faced lie. Don't buy into it. There's nothing... I believe that, yes, God blesses us, but he does it in his own way, in his own time. Not because of something we've done. Church, it is impossible for anything but the grace of God in and through Jesus Christ to save you. To forgive you of your sins. It's the only way. The blood of Christ is the only way. Jesus is the only way. You need scripture to back that up? Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father except through him. And that's why we see in verse 5, Jesus had to come, right? Verse 5, can I have the slide? It's verse next, it should be up there. 
Okay, that was three. Keep going. Yeah, verse five and verse nine, right? Or five and seven. I don't know where I'm at. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus had to come to earth. In verse nine, he says, Behold, I have seven up there, it's nine. He says, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written in the scroll of the book. And then in verse 9, he says, Behold, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And verse 10 is one of the most important things that we can grasp from this passage. It says, And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Salvation is before you, church. It's always before you. Are you going to receive it? Are you going to receive it? And after you receive it, guess what? You may mess up again. But it's still there for you to repent of that sin and to turn from it and turn to God and to receive him again. I, I love Paul's, Paul's passionate speeches and stuff when he would talk about, he said, he said I, I die daily, you know? Think of, think of David. I mean, we use that example all the time. Man, I don't know anyone that messed up more than David. Maybe Peter, but David messed up a lot. And he was called a man after God's own heart. The grace of God has forgiven you of your sins. And I'd love to say, well, Scripture says that he's forgotten your sins. Verse 17, I will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more. You don't have to beat yourself up over it no more. And I would argue that if someone else beats you up over it, they haven't truly forgiven you. And that's on them. And that's on them. And so church, I ask you something else today. Do you truly believe that Jesus Christ can change you? can change you at the core, can save you, can make you new, can make you into that old creation, can usher in that new life and expel that old life. We hear a lot of things in this, in this world today that people can't change. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes, they can. By the grace of God. I believe it, church. And, and if you don't, if you're sitting there saying, I don't believe that, Pastor. I'm going to be bold and say you truly don't understand Jesus. I'm going to be bold and say you don't understand his message. You don't understand his sacrifice. You don't understand his kingdom. You don't understand his mission for your life. You don't understand the grace of God if you don't believe that Jesus can change you. We are not forever trapped in sin's grip. He has given us a way out. Amen? Amen. The grace of God has set us free. Grace saves us from a life without God and it empowers us for a life with God. So don't be paralyzed by only expecting grace for forgiveness. It's so much more. Last week I shared a passage that was near and dear to my heart. It was, it was Hebrews 4.16. I had the ladies read it for me. And it says this. It says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, sometimes in the, in the veil of suffering, right, uh, uh, we are emotionally and physically and spiritually down. Does anyone ever feel that way? Just emotionally, physically, just, just every aspect of you just feels down, that we're in desperate need of the grace of God, feeling that I don't know if I can keep on going. I've been there. Do you ever feel that way? Maybe you feel that way today. And, and, and it's then, more than ever, that we need to claim God's promise from Hebrews 4.16. We need to claim his promise to help us in our time of need. And that verse tells us what we're supposed to do when we feel like we're about to be overwhelmed. Or when we are overwhelmed. And it holds a tremendous promise over your life. Our Lord does not leave us in our suffering. He doesn't abandon you when bad things happen. He doesn't leave us with no course of action and no place to turn. I invite the worship team to come back up. He invites you to the throne of grace. 
which is prayer, which is with him. And so this invitation of Hebrews is open to you today, church. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Just start playing whenever. I'll wrap it up here. Just play softly or something. So I want to ask you, <laughs> is today a time of need for you? You know, many of God's children have put this promise to task and found out that it's absolutely true. That when we seek God, he always shows up. Every time. Maybe not how we want him to, but he's there. He's absolutely there. And if you're troubled and in need of grace today, won't you come and, and pray with me? Come to the altar while we sing this song and just, just pray with me. If you don't want me to pray with you, just, just wave me off. It's fine, no big deal. Pray where you're at. Listen to the song we're about to sing and, and believe what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ, in all grace and mercy and love for you, invites you to come to him and he wants to give you rest. And so we're gonna sing this song. If you feel led to pray this morning, pray. If you wanna stand and sing, stand and sing. Do whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Thank you for the cross, my friend. 